So you've been climbing for a little bit and you really want to get to that next level, but you're not sure what you need to be doing every single day to get to that point. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to create a plan that is personalized to you. That way you can get the most out of your claiming sessions and start seeing results. Before you get started on creating your own plan, think to yourself, what do you want to accomplish? Do you want to climb five? routes of a certain grade at your gym or is there a project that you really want to get finished before the end of the year this is going to be your guiding compass later on in this process so definitely write it down and keep it in mind now in part one of this video we're going to talk about probably the most important part of the entire training regimen process because if you miss any of these steps you're not going to get as much benefit from this process Part one is all about evaluating your current situation, your current skills, strengths, flexibility, abilities, all of that. There's going to be a lot of times where you need to record your results. And I made a printable PDF that you can get for free in the description. Make sure that you print that off and record everything that I'm about to go through. This information is going to be crucial for later in the process. So be sure to check that out. And for my Patreon members with the digital planner, I did include this in the most recent update. Let's first dive into the easier parts of your evaluation, and that includes your strength and flexibility. There are a couple things when it comes to your strength that we're gonna talk about in this video, mainly being your grip strength, your pulling strength, and your core strength. That being said, if you have time, I'd also recommend looking at your leg strength since that is a highly neglected part of climbing, but definitely important for your success. So to measure your grip strength, the easiest way to do this is probably with a hangboard with a 20 millimeter edge. And this is how I was tested. I hung on a 20 millimeter edge. And if I was able to do that for seven to 10 seconds, then I actually added weight on. If you aren't able to hold your body weight, that's okay. Another way to measure this is by using a pulley system where you are hooked into a harness with a rope that goes through the pulley system and has a weight on the other end. That way you can measure exactly how much weight is being taken off of your body for you to be able to hang on. And then what you're going to do is record the percent of your body weight that you can hold on the edge. Make sure that you give yourself ample time to recover between things and don't push yourself too hard because we don't wanna get injured during the evaluation stage of your training process. Now that you have your grip strength, let's give your hands a little bit of a rest and let's evaluate your core. A really easy way to do this is the same way that I recommended in a previous video I did where you lay flat on the ground and you push your body from a laying position into a high plank position. The idea here is that you try to lift your body without allowing your core to dip or arch. If you're able to do this, fantastic, but record how it went. Did it dip slightly? Did it dip a whole lot? That's okay, just record how it went. Now that your hands have had a little bit of rest, let's go into your pulling strength and actually do a couple of pull-ups. Now, if you can do two pull-ups, then I recommend adding weights. See how much weight you can add and still do two pull-ups. And the same thing with hangboarding, if you can't do body weight pull-ups, put a pulley system on and see how much weight you need off. You could also do bands, which are really common for pull-up training, but if you wanna be more precise with your evaluation, I recommend the pulley system. Now that you know what percent of your body weight you can do pull-ups with, do at least two pull-ups with, record that down so you have it for the next part of the video. If you wanted to evaluate your legs by doing, see how low you can get in one-legged squats, or you can also see how low you can get with two-legged squats, depending on how strong your legs are. After evaluating your strengths, we can evaluate flexibility. And there is a bit more to this than I thought there was. First off, there is the finger touch for your shoulders. You can also see how far you can spread your legs apart in the splits position. And this measurement is something where you should be able to hold your body weight and get out of. So don't put yourself in a compromising position during these tests. Something that you may not have considered is also your ankles flexibility. This is one way that you can evaluate that. You're gonna place your foot flat on the floor and then push your knee towards the wall. 
how far away can you get your foot from the wall while keeping your foot flat and making contact with your knee. There are a couple of ways to evaluate your endurance. One way is you can see how long you can stay on the wall if you're at a gym that might have a traversing wall. This obviously isn't the best way to do things, but it's a good start in the right direction. Another thing is seeing how many times you can go up and down a roped route, for example. The problem with this is in a few months when you wanna reevaluate yourself, that route might not be there. And that's why everyone that I've done evaluations through has always put me on a lattice board. So if your climbing gym has a lattice board, I'd recommend seeing how many laps you can do on the lattice board. That way in a couple of months, you can do the test again and the lattice board stays the same. So you'll be able to see the difference between today and in a few months. So once you have that information, go ahead and record how many laps you can do on the lattice board. This next one may be the most important thing that you need to evaluate, and that's your technique. Technique is probably the most common thing that is holding people back. It's something you'll need to continue improving in throughout your entire climbing journey. Probably the easiest way to evaluate your technique is by climbing on a couple of different routes and taking video of yourself climbing. I've talked a little bit about how to evaluate your technique in videos, so I'll just briefly go over that and one thing that I recently learned that will definitely help you in this part. But one thing that you're going to want to look at is your arms, for example. Are you able to keep straight arms while you're climbing or do you find yourself pulling off and doing lock off? That's typically an indication that your body position could use some help. Not always, but definitely a possibility there. And then also look at the shape that your body's making while it's climbing. Are you keeping that triangle position? Like we talked about in my crimp video, where if your hands are close together, you're gonna want your feet wide apart. If your feet are close together, then you're gonna want your hands far apart. Additionally, are you actually using different techniques like drop knees and flags, for example? One thing that I recently learned and I'm super stoked to share with you guys is also looking at the straight lines between your hands and your feet. If you haven't already seen Hannah Morris's video that she did with B, I would highly recommend it. They actually evaluate her body position for drop knees and shows when your core is engaged, you're gonna have a straight line between your hands and your feet. Actually, if you haven't seen that video, you should probably add that to your watch list. The last part of your evaluation is probably the hardest thing to evaluate and it's probably the most subjective. We're gonna look at your mental strength. A lot of times beginners don't even think about this unless they're constantly afraid when they're on the wall, but things like how tight is your grip while you're going up a hold? Do you trust your feet? These kind of things. They're not just technique things, they're also a mental strength thing. The more you trust yourself, the harder you're gonna be able to climb. Additionally, do you have common fears like a fear of falling or the fear of failure? These are really common fears that can prevent you from climbing harder routes. I had an interview with John McGrath, who's one of the writers from Vertical Mind, and we talked specifically about things that you can do to overcome your fear of falling and fear of failing. So also make sure that's on your watch list. Now that we have everything recorded, we're going to actually look at what we've recorded and identify our strengths and weaknesses. For example, if you can do pull-ups with more than your body weight, strength is probably one of your strengths. If you have a really hard time with doing flags, then maybe technique is something that you need to work on. So with that in mind, just make an outline of what things you think you need to improve and what things you think are actually at a pretty decent level for you right now. Of course, we can always improve, but in this next part, it's really important that we know the difference between our strengths and weaknesses. Now we're into part two of the video, and in this part, we're going to look at what we just evaluated in part one and what we can do to improve it. We're not to our plan yet. We're not creating what we're doing every single day yet. We're going to identify what we can do to improve our weaknesses. If you identified that technique is something that you're really challenged with, then we wanna make sure that we add a list of things that can help with our technique. 
footwork is something that you're struggling with, then you're going to want to find a bunch of footwork drills or things that you can do to help increase your footwork skills. If you identified that you have a weaker core, then we're going to want to find drills that help support building your core and maybe some core workouts that you're willing to add to your training regimen in the next part of the video. Some other things to consider is grip trains. There are other workouts you can do to build your grip strength without hanging, so definitely keep that in mind. And the same thing can be for pulling strength. If you aren't able to do a pull-up, then find some drills that are going to help you with your pulling strength, or maybe some basic workouts that you can do to build that arm strength. Once we have a pretty decent list of things that we can do to support what we've evaluated as our weaknesses, we are ready for part three. And part three is where we actually create your plan. Now that we have our evaluation, what we can do to support what we've evaluated, it is time to actually create the plan. Introducing part three, creating your personalized plan. Now, the first thing we wanna do is look at a week. And the first thing we're gonna do is identify a really good day for a solid rest. This is going to be one day per week where you will not touch a climbing board. You will not hang board. You're not going to do pull-ups. Now, it's okay if you do push-ups or if you go on a walk, but we're not gonna do any major strength training as this is a day where our body can depend on us for full recovery. Then we're going to add at least two other rest days. These rest days are different than the one rest day I mentioned because it's okay in these rest days to do a core workout or to go for a run. However, during these rest days, we're not gonna go climbing and we're probably not gonna do any hangboarding either. Depending on how experienced you are at climbing or perhaps how old you are or your physical fitness, that kind of thing, you may need to add more than just three total rest days. So consider that right now is the time to add rest days. We do that before we add our training days. Now that we have our rest days in place, it's time to compare our goal with our evaluation and the things that we can do to create the perfect training plan for you. If your goal was to finish this project in the next two months, then at this point, you're going to add on your calendar, when are you going to project on that climb? Are you going to project two times a week? If your goal is to reach a certain grade, then you may want to input in your training day when you're gonna be trying routes of that grade. After you have this in place, it's time to put in the drills and exercises that we listed in part two of the video. An important part of this step is that you combine things that complement each other and don't hurt each other. One thing that tends to complement every climbing session is some sort of technique drill. Not one that you're gonna be doing really hardcore hard work on, but maybe a footwork drill, for example, can go really well with a strength training day. Or strength and endurance, where you do strength for the first half of the climbing session and endurance for the second half of the climbing session. They complement each other really well. So go through that list of things that you made that are going to support what your weaknesses are and input them into your week. Now that you have this week outlined, let's talk about how many weeks you should be doing this. Most training regimens have you doing this for three weeks in a row. And then on the fourth week, you do like one or two climbing sessions with no training. That way your body can fully recover. I've found this rest week to be really helpful in my training. And it's likely because our body just gets to the point where it needs more recovery time. In addition, just like if you do a workout over and over and over again, if your body gets used to it, it's going to decrease the benefits that it gets from it. So by taking this week off, you then reset your body so everything is hard again, which is actually good so that you can get the improvements that you want. Try and stick with your plan for three months. Then after the three months, reevaluate yourself. Did you make the improvements you're looking for or do you need to make adjustments and move forward? This is a great step to getting you closer to that goal faster than you would if you didn't have a plan. Now that you've got your plan, go out and do it. Improve your climbing, have fun. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and watch this video next where I go through 17 drills for footwork that you should definitely include in your regimen. You know when 
You think that you've recorded everything and then you go back and look at it and it turns out five minutes of it recorded and then your SD card was full and so you have to redo everything. I feel like I had a good intro to combining a strength day with a grip training day or campus boarding, hangboarding with grip 